Hello, thanks for joining me. This is Dave Briner from Synergist Technologies. And uh, yesterday was September 28th, and the Fusion team came out with their September update. And I always like to come out quickly with um, maybe a couple highlights, or certainly one that I want to show you that I think can make a big impact on um, on your work. So what they did, they came out with something called, I don't know, they really don't name it, but it's kind of like a smart template. And uh, it automatically places um, views in, uh, in a predefined template. So I thought I'd take a few minutes and try to step through uh, how to create it. I was playing with it a little bit this morning and I found uh, I found it pretty interesting. So let's uh, let's take a look. So I'm just going to go up and you're going to see on the pull down that there's a brand new entry here um, for the file and it says uh, new drawing template. So what I'm going to do, you can start one from scratch or um, I'm going to pick uh, one of my predefined templates that I've created previously. So um, it's, I think it's probably a pretty good starting point. So what you do is it's going to present you uh, with a sheet and then what you're going to do is create a placeholder. So I'm going to just start with a placeholder. And let me pull this in. You're going to see right here that I can create new and I can create an assembly, a component, a folding, a folded component, a flat pattern, or storyboard. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one for a base assembly, I suppose. And I'm just going to place a view. All right, and um, yes, all visible edges. I'm just going to leave it kind of, um, kind of like that. And I can place a second view on there, or I can just place um, a projected view of that assembly. And I can come in, edit that and I can make that one a shaded view if I like. So I'm going to add a sheet and I'm going to put another placeholder and I'll place it right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sheet that may be that will be representative of almost any kind of model uh, that I want to show. So on this one I am going to put a storyboard for an exploded view and I'll accept that and while I have that I'm going to place a uh, an assembly view and that one's going to be probably just fine and for this one I'm going to choose a nice symmetric view I think so I'm going to place that and I want this to be shaded so pretty much you can make up any kind of um, template that you like. So and even on this one, I think I'm going to put in a table. So I'll put in a parts list of what may be on any of these views. So I'm going to add another one. And on this one, and I'll select, um, I'm going to put a component. I'm going to place that. I'm going to select my front view. Uh, you can select in with edges if you like. Uh, I think I'll just say visible edges for this one. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to place my my other views and I can even come up and I'll say OK. This one I'll edit and I'll make that a shaded view. And interesting about this is I can even put in a table. And what this will show me is, I know there's only one part, but it'll at least show me um, a parts list with that, with that part line in it with the description. So I can, I can place this if I want anywhere. Uh, I can even just maybe uh, locate it right under the part. Uh, any of these can be edited a little bit later. Uh, let's see, I think I'm going to add one for, 
about I'll place it there and this one I'm going to make a flat pattern and I'll say okay and I might as well put a view up here of the folded component and I'll make this shaded and I think I'll make it an isometric and I'll say okay and for this one I'll even put in my bend table and I can how about if I place it up a little bit right there so I don't want to take too long and you can go on and on and and continue to place in um, whichever kind of views that you want to generate the neat thing about this is that the the template will only select you know, if, if I don't have a flat pattern or an exploded view it won't show that it'll just take the assembly and the component um, and map them out that way so it, it makes a judgment on what's involved in your template so I'm just gonna say save and for this I have drawing templates and I'm going to name this um, is my synergist template and I'll make this a I'll make it under my drawing template synergist smart templates and I'll save okay so I'm going to close this now I'll also go back to my front sheet save it just in case oops And I'll close it. So what I'll do is I'll start by um, choosing this one. Now one thing that I did, I was playing with this morning, one thing that I recommend is set up your template so that your placed view, the first one, is always going to be a front view. So if you have a view that you want to see predominant in most of your smart templates, um, I recommend you go in and just uh, reset. Uh, your front view so you can do that simply by uh, right clicking on the cube and coming down to set current view as front so whichever view you want to select if you want this your front you're just going to come down set current view as front so it's quick so what I'm going to do is I'll leave this model open and I'm going to um, new drawing from design and we'll just say OK. And I am going to choose my smart template that just created. And you can see everything on full assembly and I'm going to say OK. It will open the template. And you're going to see that it's going to start automatically populating what's available in my model into the template. So here's my front view, and uh, I don't have an exploded view, but it's put the front drawing in and the, and the isometric. Here's the exploded view. And if I don't like this, I can come up and edit this, edit view, and say, you know, I want a different, uh, different view on that. So I can say, well, maybe I want... Uh, maybe not that one. So you, the, the nice thing is about this, you can change what your view is going to look like. So you can walk through each of these and that one maybe looks, and I can change the scale then too. I'm going to just say maybe 1.5, that looks better. So that works nice. And what I can do then is I can continue on and if I want, uh, I can edit this and I can just now start putting in some of my balloons oops too many and let me get these over here 
So works kind of nice. Close. Let's see what else it brought up. Now it's brought up individual parts, and you're going to see that you know I've got um, I've got my right side. I can space these a little bit if I don't want that. And it's got my part number, um, my description, and material. So now I do understand that some of these parts are not going to need their own sheet. I mean we can always go back and edit that uh, and delete whatever views we don't want. I certainly don't need um, two views of this wheel so I can just go in and delete. Uh, the other nice thing is I can come in and if I want I can uh, let's take a section view so I can always come down and and let me see if I can get this. Continue. And I, and I didn't, I clicked before I placed it. Let's try it again. Take that. Say continue. Now here's my view. I'll slide that out. And I'm going to two to one from parent. That'll be fine. Um, what do I want here? Visible edges, visible hidden. And you can come back and edit any of this that you like. And there's my section. So you can come in and edit what views you like. I know this is a small pin. It certainly doesn't need its own sheet. And the same thing uh, with my lock pin. But the concept, I think, is is really nice. I mean, it's uh, it's got some definite possibilities. Uh, here's one that's a sheet metal. And I can try the exact same thing on here. And I'll just say uh, new drawing from design. And I'll have my smart template. I'll just say OK. It generates pretty quick. I mean, it's um, now this one I think is only going to have a couple sheets. It's going to have a flat pattern of each. So here's my kind of like my general assembly, but uh, I don't like this. So what I want to do is edit the view. Uh, I think it's way too small. Let's try. Let's try one to one. That's better. So I can come in and edit these as I like. Here's uh, my first part, and it's got my bend table already in there. Again, I can change the size if I like of anything. I can go on and start dimensioning. And here's my second part, and I have the bend table for that. So um, I think this works pretty nice. Um, it's not going to solve all your issues, but I think it's a good starting point, uh, especially if you have something that's got like a lot of parts in it. Uh, adding uh, projected view so if you do some depending on how you work this could be a real advantage uh, not hard to generate uh, just start doing a couple predefined pages so take a look at it uh, see if you like it uh, I think it could be a, a real winner in, in some workflows so uh, thank you again for joining me um, this is Dave Briner from Synergist Technologies have yourself a great day